I just want to say before I get started here that this is one of the one of the worst, if not the worst, physical afflictions I've ever suffered. You know, just when I think I'm getting better, yesterday I had a horrible, horrible, dizzy day. I went back to the therapist. He did some kind of needle thing on the back of the nerve there, which made my neck so stiff and so sore. It is today a little bit too, but um, it's been a rough um, physical affliction, that's for sure. Um, it's kept me pretty much incapacitated as far as anything is concerned. Um, I do little things. Yes, I do. I do exercising around the house. I told you I do the cleaning of the house and the cooking and stuff like that. Doesn't mean it's not difficult because it is. Uh, moving about is still difficult for me. Um, and like I said, I, I'm getting more and more better, but then just when I think I'm getting better, I have a horrible day like I did yesterday. Um, this morning, I'm still a little bit woozy in my head too. So all I can do is pray that this is done real soon. I mean, that physiotherapist is really not doing a whole hell of a lot. He done that aptly maneuver. Yes, he did. Um, it, it improved a little bit from there. And yesterday when I saw him, he says that uh, BP, BPVV is uh, not there nearly as much as it was. So I think it's a time thing for me, however long it may take to come through it. But um, it's really tedious. It's really affecting my life because I cannot function like I normally function. And I told you already, and this is not just bringing it up for the fact that uh, I can't provide for my house because I cannot go out and get a job. I'm restricted in that sense with this physical affliction where I cannot even go out and get a job. And this is putting a real strain on me in the sense of uh, giving back here to this house. Um, I express it wholeheartedly to you folks, not as a bellyache, but as something that is restricting me in many ways. <clears throat> so, you know, I continue to bring my shows, which is great. God sits me down, keeps me steady enough to do my show, which I am thankful for. And I'm able to do a little bit of work here and there on, on what I want to build on here as far as uh, working on my site, working on different things. You know, uh, <clears throat> I love the truth with all my heart and passion. I love God and the truth of what God is doing in his universe. And this is what's keeping me going, the spirit that vibrates within me. Never mind the physical, which I'm suffering, but the spirit that vibrates within me is what's keeping me going. And that is God's spirit. <clears throat> so just keep, you, keep me in your prayers. And like I said, any support and, and love and prayers and contributions, whatever it may be, that come my way through my brethren here, is well appreciated, especially in this time of trouble and, and, and affliction that I'm going through. Um, I'm going to bring out, uh, I'll see how many I can get through. I talked about the eight Gospels yesterday, so I'm going to bring them all out. And the first one was, uh, of course, the Gospel which God brought before to Abraham. The first message of good news, which we find termed, gospel, quote-unquote, in the scriptures is the well message or eoangelion which God brought before, a before to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, and chapter 22, verse 16 through 18, and Galatians chapter 3, verse 8. Concerning this gospel, it is written that Abraham believes God, and it is reckoned to him for righteousness. Galatians 3, 6 and Romans 4, 3. <clears throat> the, 
This statement sets before us a great dividing principle in the scriptures. First of all, it reveals that Abraham not only believed in God, that he existed, as did the multitudes around him, but we are clearly and plainly told that he believed God. Simple as that. He believed the well message, the message of good news or gospel, which God brought to him. This set Abraham apart from the rest of the world of mankind and constituted him the father of all who are, all of those who are believing. Romans chapter 4, verse 11 through 12, and Galatians chapter 3, verse 9. For them to become the enjoyers of the allotment of the righteousness through faith or face righteousness. Romans chapter 4, verse 13 through 16. The righteousness which is from God for faith. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 through 9. For them to be blessed together with believing Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, verse 9. Saving faith. For emphasis, I press the truth here, that the gospel which God brought before to Abraham reveals the difference between believing in God and what may be termed evangelical or saving faith which is believing God, that is believing his promises. It not only formed the line which separated Abraham and his seed from the rest of the world of mankind in that day, but it also but it is also the dividing principle and saving factor among men in God's administration of grace in the world today. This will be more clearly and fully explained when we reach the study of the gospel of our salvation. For the present, however, we should recognize, that the, recognize and hold firmly in mind the clear fact and truth of God's revelation here. That the well message, or good news, which he brought before to Abraham, that in thee shall all the nations be blessed, was indeed a gospel to Abraham. But it is not the gospel of our salvation. Therefore, a clear grasp of, the, of this truth is the first step in recognizing the different Gospels which God has revealed in the Scriptures. The second one, the Gospel which Gabriel brought, before, brought to Zechariah. Hmm. How few ever think of Gabriel preaching a Gospel to, to Zechariah when he brought him the glad tidings that Elizabeth, his aged wife, would bear a son, whose name should be called John. Yet Gabriel expressly said that he was sent from the, th from the throne of God to speak to him and bring him the these glad tidings. Luke chapter 1, verse 13 through 19. But our translators beclouded the thinking and confused the understanding of the English reader here in rendering the word... Um, <clears throat> E-U and Jella, Jella, I can't even pronounce this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it on the screen because I, I don't like, you know, it, it's a Greek word right there. See it right there. And it's a long one. I cannot pronounce that. If you can pronounce it, you tell me how to pronounce it. But it's a Greek word, of course, by the phrase, these glad tidings. So that basically that word means glad tidings. <clears throat> if they had been uniform and translated at gospel, as they did in Galatians 3.8, and elsewhere, it would have greatly aided the reader in recognizing the different gospels, which God has revealed in the scriptures. However, the truth to be recognized in this case is that according to the original scriptures, when Gabriel brought the message of glad tidings from the throne of God to Zechariah, that his wife was to have a son, he brought him a gospel. And... And though it was a real well message, glad tidings or gospel to Zechariah, nevertheless, it was not concerned with salvation. Okay, the third one. The gospel which an angel brought to the shepherds. Multitudes have read of the glad tidings of great joy, which an angel of the Lord brought to the Judea, Judean shepherds on the memorial night of the birth of Christ. Yet few ever re have ever recognized that the words glad tidings were translated in the Greek, which is rendered gospel elsewhere in their Bible. 
This inconsistently, inconsistency of translation is another example of how the fact is covered or hidden to the English reader, that God has used the word, this word, to speak of different gospels in the original scriptures, leaving him to erroneously think and believe that there is but one gospel in the Bible. See, this is correctly cutting the word of truth, like I said yesterday. You gotta understand that there are, there are eight gospels, literally, that it speaks of in the scriptures, in the Greek scriptures. But you gotta decipher them and you gotta understand that they're not homogenized into one gospel. And what is taught out in the world of Christendom is that, that there's just one gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ when you walked on the earth. Well, no, there's different gospels. You know, the higher revelations come through Paul's epistles and especially his prison epistles. So there are different gospels. Luke chapter 2, verse 10, concordantly translated, would read, an evangel of great joy. And though it was a message of glad tidings, an evangel of great joy to all the people of, of Israel, that Christ, their long-promised Savior, had been born, Matthew chapter 2, verse 21, and Luke chapter 2, verse 10 through 11, nevertheless, it is not the glad tidings or gospel of our salvation. The well message or gospel of our salvation is not the birth of Christ. But, ye, but his death, burial, and resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4. This adds another unmistakable witness that EU, EU Angelion, well message or gospel, does not always speak of the same message of good news in the Bible. The fourth one the gospel which Timothy brought to Paul. That Paul brought the gospel to Timothy would hardly be questioned, but how few would admit that Timothy brought a gospel to Paul? A fewer and fewer still would think of his bringing this gospel f from the saints in Thessalonica. This loss of recognition and understanding that God had God has really used the word euangelion or gospel in the scriptures to convey any message of good news has brought untold confusion and spiritual loss to students of the Bible. And one of the most helpful and illuminating recoveries of truth is the recognition that the word gospel is not always used to speak of the same message of good news in the scriptures and neither is it always concerned with salvation. We have already considered three different Gospels, namely one, the Gospel which God brought before to Abraham, and number two, the Gospel which Gabriel brought from the throne of God to Zechariah, and the third one was the Gospel which an angel of the Lord brought to the shepherds, and now we are under consideration of the fourth Gospel, that is the Gospel which Timothy brought from, Thessalon from the Thessalonian believers to Paul. In our King James Version Bible, it reads, But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity that you have a good remembrance of us, of us always, desiring to see us as we also, see, as we also to see you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. Now you've got to understand, that is the King James Version. A concordance study of the words good tidings in the Greek of the scripture will reveal that they came from the word, and I have to show you this word again too because it's a long one, this one here. I can't pronounce it. Which was translated gospel, gospel elsewhere in our, in our Bible. The reader can verify this fact for himself by comparing the Greek of this text with that of Acts 14.21 and 1 Peter 1.12. In these two occurrences, the word was correctly and uniformly translated gospel. But when they came to the same word here in, Thess in Thessalonians, referring to the gospel which Timothy brought from the Thessalonians to Paul, the translators inconsistently and confusingly changed it to read good tidings. And consequently, Consequently, be clouded the facts of revelation to the English reader. A correct concordant translation of the text reads as follows. 
Now here's the concordant translation of that scripture that I just read from the King James Version. Yet at present, because of Timothy's coming from you and bringing us the evangel of your faith and love, and that you have a good remembrance of us always, longing to see us even as we also you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. This scripture positively and unequivocally verifies the truth for us that the word eo, eo, eo angelion, well message, refers to any message of good news. And in this instance, it is concerned with the good news of the Thessalonians, faith and love and good remembrance of Paul and not of salvation. Therefore, our concordance study thus far reveals that the same Greek word, euangelion, well message, is used first of the gospel which God brought before Abraham. Secondly, the glad tidings which Gabriel brought from the throne of God to Zechariah. Thirdly, the glad tidings again which an angel of the Lord brought to the shepherds. And fourthly, the good tidings which Timothy brought from the Thessalonian believers to Paul. This proves beyond all contradiction that the word does not always speak of the same message of good news in the scriptures. And neither is it always concerned with salvation. <clears throat> the fact and truth is that the word eo angelion, well message or gospel in itself alone positively determines nothing more than a message of good news. Any message of good news is an euangelion or gospel. Therefore, the word always requires a qualifying phrase or context to reveal this kind, to, to reveal the kind of character of the good news or gospel that is under consideration and the person or people for whom it is intended. These unmistakable facts and evidences of the different ways in which God has used the word euangelion or gospel in the scriptures reveal how supremely important it is that we concordantly re-examine re re -examine our scriptures anew concerning all the occurrences of this word so that we may be certain that we are thinking and understanding, believing and teaching on this all-important subject in accord with that which he has really spoken. Okay, I'll go into the last four, which are the most awesome ones, because these are the Gospels which bring the higher revelations from Paul's epistles. So you want a well message, you're going to get a well message. But that well message has to be taken in context. So each gospel is, is separate for that purpose. You have to understand who the gospel or well message is going out to and what it is concerned about. And that's what I mean. Paul's, Paul's evangel was for the higher calling above in Christ Jesus for us who are members of the body of Christ. Calling out of the nations those who will be members of the body of Christ to complete Christ in his higher station among the celestials. So this is our gospel. This is our evangel that we are bringing forth to the world. But in order to correctly cut it, you have to understand it. That's the same with the uncircumcision and circumcision. Why mix it in a pot and mix it all together? Peter's gospel was different than Paul's. Uh, the four accounts are of Jesus' life when he walked on the earth as a human being. That has nothing to do with our high calling in Christ. Absolutely nothing. So you need to correctly cut it to understand it. If you're going to mix it all together, why are you going back and forth from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to Paul's gospel and mixing it all together in a homogenized stew and stirring it around? Because what comes out of it is discordant, unscriptural, perverted, junk and that's exactly what comes out it's it might as well be spewed out of your mouth because it's ridiculous that's not where the love of god is in christ our message is the love of god and this is what we're bringing forth and this is what i'm bringing forth on these shows the absolute love of god through the death 
burial, and resurrection of our Lord. This is what we believe, and this is our foundation. Because without the resurrection, we would have no knowledge of where we are in Christ. We died the death of Christ. We were roused with Christ. We are seated to, with Christ among the celestials next to God in spirit now. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Hopefully today will go smooth in my brain or I can just think straight. You know, I get excited about the word of God but I don't go too over exuberant because of my condition. This is why probably you could not hear me. I said that yesterday. And I also put out a couple of videos prior to that now, and I deleted them because I was working on that laptop. And I still am gonna work on that laptop. I just went through a really rough day yesterday, and <clears throat> today hopefully I can do some work here in the Lord. and to bring you an excellent message, to bring you a clear video and a clear audio. I'm not here to soup it up in that way, but I would like to have added features in the sense of bringing you scripture and posting them on, on my videos. I know Mike Knotts does that. Mike Knotts does that. He gave me some uh, tips on that, so I will. And I, I did that in prior videos because I had the editing software. So it's just a matter of getting it together, that's all. And lately, in my physical condition, I haven't been able to do a whole lot. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. I thank you for your love, your prayers, your contributions, your, your, your loving heart, and your giving heart. I thank you so much. Grace and peace.